Good evening, everyone. You're very welcome, as always. Thanks for joining us, as always. Now, the discussion this evening is, I've really, I've genuinely been really looking forward to this, and I'm going to learn as much from this as you are. We've got some, I'm, I, we've got Paul Borges with us this evening, who you'll know, who is our outstanding spokesman on uh, energy, environment, and his work on climate and the climate fiasco is just outstanding. I urge everyone to watch it and share it because people need, desperately need to understand this issue. The press is, as on so many issues, completely one-sided on this. And largely because the press is one-sided on it, so are our mainstream politicians. We are only hearing climate crisis, climate alarmism, and we're not hearing the very real cost to our people, to citizens, behind that that is created by this green agenda. And we're going to talk about this tonight. And as I say, I'm going to learn every bit as much as you are. And I'm told by Paul that we're going to be shocked by some of the revelations this evening. Um, it's already shocking, but be prepared to be even more shocked. Paul... Good evening. Good evening, Anne. How are you keeping? Okay, and um, as I always I say, as well as you can be in this absolutely stupid world we live in, I which know. all well got spot on, I think. <laughs> right. no, no. Being asked to believe what's not in front of our eyes, and you, if you don't believe that, if you if you ignore, you have to ignore what's in front of your eyes, and you have to believe an alternative, and that's where we are. Anne. Honestly. And I know I know how frustrated you get, Paul, as a man mm -hmm. of facts and science Terrible. and truth. Mm. I know how much the world we live in today frustrates mm. you. I really do. What the grandchildren um, being taught and is terrible. What everyone's being taught, even in nature programs, in this and that, you know, the David Attenborough stuff, etc. All of it is so just simply untrue. And it's quite, it's shocking, it's shocking in so many ways, but the David Attenborough part of it is even, you know, people trust David Attenborough, don't right. they? Mm -hmm. He's been around for my whole life, he's been mm -hmm. doing this. Yeah. And he's that voice of, of nature documentaries that we're also familiar mm -hmm. with. And, yeah. and even he is pushing what is not true. And, and it's, you know, given that, it's no wonder that so many people are reluctant to look at the real truth. They don't, it's, it's almost a, it's a shake your world. I, I mean, it, it started off, the big thing he started off with, David Amper, was all rushes coming off the cliff, that one. And it, the evidence now is that the quadcopter doing the film filming and the, yeah. was, and the polar bears and the quadcopter combined were driving them off the cliff um, because they're trying to escape the polar birds and this strange thing in the sky. But actually it happens regularly every year, you know, and it's caused by an overpopulation of all rushes, by the way. And... That was presented as climate change somehow, making them all, you know, the end is coming, or my, my walrus brain is going to make me jump off the cliff. Uh, and even though that was totally disproven with videos showing the polar bears now, because videos came from Russia about it, showing the polar bears, which the BBC edited out, um, they still don't apologise. They still don't just say it wasn't true. That's that's bad. You know, They can't even accept when they're caught out. Yeah. And that's what started it. But he's a nice man who's been totally brainwashed. And you, you, you think he's been duped as well as, as everyone else? He's as fooled as anyone. I think he's sincere. I think he's dead sincere. I don't in any way disrespect his integrity. Uh, I, I, I basically know he's been fooled. Yeah. And before we get on to the, the detail of, because we were yeah. talking about this before we started recording, um, why, Paul? Why, why? Why do we have this? this big lie? Why? Well, because if you have a big lie, no matter what the lie is, you have control. You can bring in laws and you can do things. So the basic thing behind the climate change, let's go to real fundamental, is what the yeah. UN say. The UN say this is a worldwide problem. We need worldwide government to manage right. it. Uh, and basically that government's got to be communist. <laughs> I'm not kidding you. That, yeah. that is, I, mean, I can actually give you, I wasn't prepared for this for this, but I can give the slides with the quotes from the UN saying we need world government, world control, blah, blah, blah. And it's and it's, and also we need equalization to take from the West and give to the rest of the world uh, the money, rest of the rest of the world. And without that, you can't get the climate change policy right. And really, but I'm going to do a forecast because I'm quite brave. I do forecasting these things. 
we're going to move because CO2 isn't working, because it's not true that CO2 is this problem, they claim. We're going to be dropping CO2 soon. It's already started. And we're going to the real problem. It's not, forget CO2. The real problem is, is capitalism. And we've got to get rid of capitalism because capitalism is causing climate change. And um, I think you'll see a bit of that as we go into this talk, as we, as, uh, into this thing. I think we should do, if, if you're up for it, Paul, we should do another um, stream on, on world government. Yeah, fine. And the aim towards world government. Absolutely. Okay, so let's, let's get started then. Yeah. You're, you're, you, you set the starting point. Well, the starting point, we're going to start with Alex Sharma here. Uh, has an image of our, uh, he's the um, president, Des, 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 he, he's going to be in charge of COP, of the next COP26 meeting in Glasgow. And of course, all the fuss now Boris is making with the huge, huge money he's going to spend, etc. is for him to be glorying it as, as the boss of, of, of Glasgow. And this is the man who's going to chair it, etc. And it's going to be a huge success. So this is where we start off with. And he said, we all, and I'm quoting him, we all know that we must act now on climate change. Well, mm. that's an untrue statement because I don't know that. And I'm afraid a lot of other people don't know that. So uh, you just lied about that because you must know that we don't all know that. So it starts off with this assumption, which, by the way, you're not allowed to question, of course, in the mainstream media. Uh, and I'll, I'll go into detail on that. So let's just see. Let's just see why why we must make this change okay so okay. i'm going to bring up i'm going to bring up the next slide which is each country's share of co2 emissions yes so right. just see how important we are as the uk well there it is at the top united kingdom is one percent right and declining by the way it's actually to be more accurate it's 1.2 percent but they work to the various percent and and that's declining all the time india has just announced they're going full blast on fossil fuels and china is playing a double game as it always does. China is spending now three times more on coal energy than it is on green energy. And the green energy is not really green energy, it's exports to the West who are being duped into this world. So so e so one percent. And we are meant to make this. Now look at what China does there on the graph. China, and this is growing all the time. I think it's over 30 percent now. Well about oh no it's just the 2020 graph. So it's a 28 percent and the rest, and no, no one else, United States is 15% now, much less than China, and all the rest. Basically, the West, the US with Biden in charge, who's completely nuts, yeah. um, the US uh, with Biden in charge and, and with Europe, uh, uh, that, that is it. That's what it's about, wealth distribution uh, and communist control. Because what we do now is not going to change anything. If we disappeared off the face of the earth as a country, then we wouldn't be noticed because within a year it would be made up. Yeah, it's as simple as that. Okay, so that's how important this is. It's negligible. Yeah, so we're going to go to the next slide now, the next one, which is actually, let's look how successful these conferences have been. Now, the purpose of these conferences, and here I'm showing a graph of the atmospheric CO2, which is given to me by the alarmist. It's not our data I'm using through this. It's not my data. I'm using the alarmist data all the way through. And, and, and there you are. It's been growing regardless of all the conferences. So whether it's Kyoto, whether it's Montreal, Copenhagen, Paris, and even in lockdown, it's grown. CO2 has grown, right? So CO2 is growing. And so every single conference has made no difference at all. So why would you repeat the message? Why would you have another conference claiming on the success of the, and building on the success of the previous conferences, which have had no effect whatsoever? Now, no one can dispute this. This is a fact I'm giving you. These readings are what the world takes for CO2. It's on top of a mountain in Hawaii, and that's what they use as a reference for CO2 worldwide. Okay? And that's given to me. All, all we've done is put the dates on. Other people have put the dates of their conferences on. Yeah? So just, for, just to clarify, so we've got Montreal going back to the, the late 1980s. Yeah. The purpose of that was to reduce the level of CO2 in the world's atmosphere. Correct. And since that, we've had Kyoto, Copenhagen, Paris, and, and lockdown. And it's still, all of those conferences have had the same purpose. And yep. they're, well, to say they haven't worked is, is a, 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 an understatement. No, it's accelerated. The curve has gone upwards. It isn't a straight line. It's accelerating. Yep. So it's actually, after each conference, we've increased the rate of CO2. 
Incredible stuff. Can I ask for one little bit of, uh, on, yeah. the, on the first slide, uh, COP26, what's that, Paul? COP26 is the, every, every so often, these are all COP meetings, so COP26 is oh, yes. the 26th meeting of the Climate Change Conference, uh, and in this year it's being held, it was meant to be in 220, but it got delayed because oh. of COVID, and it's, it's in Glasgow this year, and Boris has got to lord it over the world, showing how green we are and how good we are, and frankly, and I'm going to use some language, slight language in this, so oh, I won't too bad. But bloody go to go to hell, all the working class. Go to hell, all the people who've got to pay for this, right? Because it's a mirage. You're being sold nothing, right? You have to, you're gonna, and I'm gonna go to the costs in a minute, which are astounding. They really are. But that that is it, and that is all about him being the big boy in Glasgow, yeah. right? And I kid you not. And oh, I, 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 I invite anyone, as always, anywhere to challenge anything I do on these videos anything because i'd love to be proven wrong because i'd learn from that i can't be proven wrong on this graph because it ain't my graph it's their graph right so there we are that's the two now the next thing i'm going to bring in is a little uh, bit of a cartoon really it's the history of the <laughs> you know it's called our last chance and two, 2015 copenhagen our last chance. No, no, really the next one. No, this is, no, it's this year the chance. No, really, 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 this really is our very last chance. And it goes on. Yes. Uh, until you get to, uh, until you get to a 16 year old girl down there in, uh, uh, in 2018 and so on, who, who basically, you know, gets awarded sort of star thing when she's totally uneducated on the subject. And we take instruction in the UN from, from a little teenage girl who doesn't understand the most basic things. This girl, uh, I know she's backtracked on it now, and her father claimed she could see CO2, which is an invisible gas. If you could see it, it'd be coming streaming out your mouth now at 40,000 parts per million, by the way, right? The atmosphere is about 410, 412, coming out of your mouth at about 30, 40,000, because you breathe in oxygen and you give out mainly CO2, not all CO2, because it's oxygen with it. Right, so this is how stupid it is. My question to you, the public, is would you believe anyone selling you something where they failed and failed and failed and never, ever succeeded, and what they were trying to achieve, the opposite has happened? Would you, but would you accept that? So why, doesn't, why don't they admit it? Why don't they say, I'm sorry, but we haven't made any difference at all? In fact, it's, it's not in not made any difference. The CO2 has accelerated. Yeah? Okay. So I thought I'd just show that little uh, cartoon. Okay, I'm going to bring up the next one now. I'm sorry, I'm, just a second. I'm going to bring up the next one, which is um, the carbon dioxide concentration. Now, I'm just taking recent levels. Yes, this is 2015 to 2020. And again, it's not my data. Again, this is from, you know, accepted data from the alarmists. Okay. And the carbon dioxide concentration has gone up. It's now at record levels, increasing at 3.11 parts per million per year. So we've got record levels, the rate of which we've never had uh, in recent history, right? Going up. Yeah. So, so that's proof it hasn't worked. Just, just explain, um, Paul, if you would. What, what do we mean by carbon dioxide concentration? Right. Well, normal, at the moment... I'll explain it better in a graph in a second, okay. but it, it's expressed in parts per million. So roughly it's been running around about the 400 parts per million, but pre-industrial, it, 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 it ran uh, down to about 280 actually. And I'm gonna actually go through that now because okay. you've asked the question which brings up the next graph. There's there, the next graph is the CO2 by the year. And if you look at this, it, 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 going back to 1832, uh, you know, the Industrial Revolution, etc., And you'll see a rapid increase in that graph, the atmosphere CO2 versus year, around about the 1960s and so on, it started to take off. Yes? And that's what that's absolutely a true graph. I don't dispute the graph. It's their graph. But we may, <laughs> that is it. Okay? And it's, we put, don't doubt this, mankind has put CO2 in the atmosphere. Right? But well, let's put this into context now historically. Yeah? Right. So the history of CO2 right. now over a long time. Now I'm now on the history of CO2. Now on this graph here, back in the Cambrian period, the biggest explosion of life there's ever been on Earth, there was up to 7,000 parts per million. 
it's now 410 and people are panicking. Yes, wow. 7,000. Now, what happened in, when it was 7,000? The air was 7,000 parts per million. So wouldn't the oceans have been all acidic? No, no, not at all. The oceans were so good that all our life to modern day life originates from that Cambrian period in the ocean, right? So the oceans didn't go acidic and stop life, did they? When it was when it was 15 to 20 even times more than it is today. Yeah. Now, if you look at that graph, and I'll just go across that graph, if you look at the uh, black curve, which is the CO2, it goes up and down with various things, right? And in the carboniferous period, it dropped a lot. That was a period when coal was made, and we had all the, all the millions of years of forests being buried, and they sucked out the CO2. Yes, though other things happen. There's been lots of volcanoes and things, because so it goes up and down. But if you look at the very end of that curve, it's down, it's down um, pre-industrial to about 280, and today about 400. Uh, and 10, 420, yeah? So there's the CO2 history. So historically, we are in a CO2 famine. And this is, by the way, why we've got record harvest in Africa now, because we've got up on CO2. We've got record harvest throughout the world now, record harvest in France now. I know you don't read about this in the mainstream media, but if you go to all the journals of oh, deal with all the farming and everything else, record harvests. And according to NASA, um, the uh, over 35 year period recently, uh, an, an extra 14% growth in all the vegetation on Earth, 70% of which is due to CO2, they said, which is about 10%. So we've added about 10% of the vegetation to Earth because of CO2, and that's the equivalent of two USA continents, two USA countries the size of that, um, going from nothing to vegetation. So that is the benefit of extra CO2. And I welcome extra CO2 because of it, okay? So why we should pick a period when we had hardly any CO2, when the plants were starving, yes? The, uh, the deserts are being encroached upon by plants because they need less water with more CO2. I've covered this in other videos, so I won't go on too, too much about it, but I'm just putting what we've got today. So we're trying to marginally change the bottom of that graph downwards uh, from 400 and, and get it back, you know? And, and it's just madness. Right, that's his history of CO2. Right, the next one I'm coming to is um, this graph is the UN climate history. Now, actually, it's quite interesting. Up to 1998, the UN published this graph and it showed the medieval warming period right, and the Little Ice Age and so on. And you can see it in the bottom graph, both the Little Ice Age and you had the Holocene about 6,000 years ago. You had it much warmer than today and you had it much warmer than today in the medieval. But then it came, then came Gore uh, 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 and, and the climate alarmists, and they changed the historic data and did away with it. So these graphs were ignored, and they had to get rid, as they said in the, in the climate gate emails, um, they said, let's get rid of the medieval warming period, which they did. They ignored all the evidence. They ignored the vineyards and the, all the history around the world. And I've given, in one of my videos, I deal with this in more detail, History all over the world of the medieval warming period ignored. And by the way, we didn't really skate on the Thames. They were just silly images from, from the Victorian times. We didn't have a little ice age, or did we? Let's muddy, muddy the waters there. So you see, they've had to change history to get here. Okay? So all I'm doing is putting a perspective on. Now I'm going to bring out um, what's happened over the last five years. On this one, on this one, this is the Hadcut five-year temperature decline. What's Hadcut? Well, headquarters, these alarmists agreed on a model to model what the Earth's, Earth's average temperature is. Is the globe warming or not? Yeah. Well, from the period 2015 to 2020, they claim carbon dioxide has increased at the fastest rate recorded since the Industrial Revolution. Is that a true statement? Yes, it is. I've just explained we're on record levels. Now let's look at the second statement <laughs> for the period 2015 to 2020, when we've had this record increasing CO2, the average temperatures decreased. So hold on, we've got decreasing temperature trend while CO2 levels are rocketing. Yes? <laughs> it's it's genuinely mind blowing. Right. Genuinely mind blowing. And had crud. There's, by the way, it's, it's even worse than this because Hadcut 4 was the number four model, if you like. Hadcut 4, they didn't like the data because it was too bad for them, so they changed the historic data again. They have a very good 
method of going back in history to change data and giving excuses. And they did that. So it's actually much worse than this if you did a proper examination for them. It's actually cooling faster. You know, they, the mayor of New York stated recently that, um, oh, about hurricanes. Hurricanes are down 30%. Landfall hurricanes are down 30% since 1945. Fact. Also, he said, no more snow. Everyone said no more snow. They said there was going to be no more snow in 2000, 2000, and many years between 2010, there was going to be no more snow. You wouldn't see it. I know children won't know what snow was. 2014, Al Gore, Al Gore kept moving it. Then they moved it to 2016, 2018, 2020. In the last 10 years, New York's had five of its record snowfalls, right? So the mayor is predicting no more snow uh, and so on. All the climate alarmists are no more snow. And the snow you've just had up in the northeast there, and it didn't happen, right? Because you've not to believe what you see, okay? Right? Because that's how bad it is. We, I mean, I'm using all their data, don't forget, right? So do people really know that over the last five years, the earth is cooling, and yet we've got to act now? as Alex Sharma said at the beginning of this um, slides, right? I'm going up the next one now, right? The IPC statement in 2018, global warming of 1.5%, some people probably made, A1. Global warming is likely to reach one and a half degrees centigrade between 2030 and 2000, if it continues to increase at the current rate, right? This is the alarmism, yeah? That's based on a model, by the way, which they've had to revise down, but never mind. That's based on the model. And it's an extreme model, by the way, even in their models. But it, actually, if you do it to the current rate, and it'd be decreasing, wouldn't it? Wouldn't be going up, be going down. And I've already said that if you look at all the evidence, uh, I would say it's more likely, and that's all that's far to go, that we're going to be cooling now than we are warming. Right? I've said that uh, actually last year uh, on, on one of my first podcasts with you. And I think we're more likely to cool than warm. And now, because I look at the science, I can't be certain of that. I'm just looking at a, a lot of spattering of evidence, but that doesn't prove it. Uh, I'm not like they are, yeah? So I'm yep. just saying more likely, that's all, right? But I wouldn't bet my house on it, okay? So right. that's where I am. But they, they make these forecasts, Dan, of which everyone has to panic, and then the panic, in panic, and you get control. That's right. what it's about. Right. Uh, right, the next one I'm bringing up. Let's now look what this is all about, the cost to you, the cost to you in the UK. I'm going to start with a 2017 prediction. Or no, fact, actually. It was costing, they said, green and social taxes cost 90 quid on your electricity bill. And that's out of a total bill of just over 1,000. Yeah, about 9%, 8%, 9%. But in actual fact, that was wrong. That was wrong because they didn't count the proper cost, even the proper almost. You see, if you put the cost of energy up, you put the cost of your products up that you're buying as well. You put the cost of industry up. You reduce jobs because now you become less competitive abroad and so on. So when you put the cost of power up, it changes the entire economy and they're not taking that into account. But there we are. That, that was the uh, Ofcom split in, um, in, in 2017. I'm now going to bring up what a gas boss predicted. He, he made a statement, the uh, block, bloke in charge of British Gas, that the bill was going to £200 next year. That's 2018. 200 pounds. He got heavily criticized for that. And the Climate Change Committee in Britain, who advises the government, said by 2030, it would only be 100 and something, 185, 100 and something pounds. This is total exaggeration. So let's actually look what happened. Yeah. So I'm going to go to the next one. And it's the cost of the true cost of green energy. And there it is, actually. It's 315 pounds um, by 2019. The, these are the true costs of energy. Uh, and because you're counting for, you see, if you if you just look at what the subsidy we give to the wind farm, you get a cost. But then you have to look at what we have to have alongside it wasted. We have to have all sorts of manipulation going on with the nuclear and with the coal and with the gas. And that costs a lot of money. So this last month, we've had to buy in power from France 10 times the normal cost because we didn't have enough energy because the wind stopped. Yeah. When the wind stops, we go down to 1%. We've got to get it from somewhere. And we can't carry on like this. But the plan is to make this four times worse by 400% increase in, in wind farms, which is going to, well, it, it, it's going to be blackouts. I'm, I'm telling you that because we won't be able to buy it in, even at any price. 
from France and their nuclear power. They're 70% nuclear power, right? So then I'm going to bring up the next one. And this is a biggie. So besides the electricity costs, and they're going to be rising, I reckon, to an extra, I would be surprised if you get, and this is me saying this now, I'll distinguish it. I would guess 800 to 1,000 pounds a year more of electricity bill within the coming years. I mean, it's going to be really rapid now because we've got to pay for all this, all this stupid, like, huge expansion. But let's, leave, let's leave, look at the NIST statement. We need, this is from the Committee on Climate Change advising the government. And this is a, a quote, we need to decarbonize our homes and how they are heated if we are to successfully tackle climate change. So let's look at this. And this is the jaw-dropping bit, yeah, to decarbonize our homes. All right, well, already, uh, hold on, we need to decarbonize our homes. Well, already, all right, the last gas boiler will be sold in 2033, abolished. Right, now, the effect on that is for that industry to decline before that. You can't sell a gas boiler, but you can't buy a house with one in after 2025, right? So no one is building new houses now with gas boilers now because there's no sense in it. And the logic is brilliant. The, even with nuclear, you've got to have, that's a really steady thing uh, as is coal and so on. But you still need the gas to use the variation to take, take care of the variation. And, and the power supply, take care of the ups and the downs and the peaks. So the great idea is this. It's a bit like Barton. I'll explain it on the Biden thing. This is green energy policy in practice. What you do is when you burn gas to cook a home or to heat, you're actually getting 100% of the power out of it effectively. You're burning the gas at source where you're heating. That's it. You've got it. Instead of which, you're going to burn it in a power plant. But the power plant, when it burns gas, only delivers 50% of it to your home via electricity. So you lose half of it. So you increase the CO2. In fact, you double it. <laughs> right? But Biden, no, Biden's done a great thing in his first week. In fact, first day, I think. He stopped the pipeline for oil from Canada down to America. And they still need oil. They've got quite a few cars over there, vehicles. And instead of which now, instead of come by a bike line, they've got to send thousands of trucks down with the oil on. And you know about pollution, and what I think on that. And you know about the cost of that compared to just flowing through a pipeline. Yeah. So Biden has not only made 11,000 people redundant and abandoned the project half the way through. Yeah. But he's, he's made sure we increase CO2. And he's made sure we increase pollution. I'm not going to go too on about pollution because I've said in so many videos, you know what I feel about it. And I can show you all these policies increase pollution. Right. Which is the big thing for me. But I mean, these policies, just think about them. Only an idiot, only a real idiot would do these things without thinking of the implications of them, right? And he walks up to a child, and, 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 and by the way, Biden was repeated, he was accused of going to stop fracking in the election campaign, and he categorically said, we are not stopping fracking. On his first day, he stopped fracking on all US, on all US owned property, right? He's got Texas now fighting him, and Pennsylvania, a swing state, relied on fracking, and they said, we are not stopping fracking. They just stopped it in the first week. So it is the madness is in between America and Britain, and they're just competing for how mad we're each going to be, right? So let's look at it. So let's look at the statement. The last gas boiler should be sold in 2033, when the majority of homes needed to be heated by electric-powered heat pumps, drawing warmth from the ground. Uh, the CCC, uh, that's the Climate Change Committee of the Government, estimates 415,000 installations per year will be required by 2025, so as to hit a target of 5.3 million heat pumps by 2030. So you're going to have a hole drilled <laughs> in your back garden, and you're going to have you know, heat pumps to replace. The problem with that is the heat pump just produces only one or two kilowatts, yeah, and you have to shove power in, you know? So you get a gain of so much. I've explained that before. And, and what's the cost of these heat pumps? So now instead of having gas where you can heat a pan and, and draw up many, many kilowatts, the equivalent, and you do your quick, you can start your boil, have a bath, things like this, you're going to have a slow dribble of power. Not at the right time, by the way, because you're going to have to store it, which you can't, right? And, and you're going to actually look at heat pump costs. Let's look at them. Let's go to someone in the industry. Now, here's a quote from somebody in the industry. 
According to the Green Energy Supplier, Green Match, the UK installation cost for an air pump ranges between 8,000 and 18,000. A ground source heat pump will even be dearer, ranging from 20 to 40,000. The other one he means between four and 18,000 is an air pump, which gives very little gain. It sits outside your house, runs 24 seven, <laughs> and gives you a little bit. It takes the air and, and passes water through basically and sucks heat out the air, no matter how, uh, and it gets less and less efficient, of course, the cooler it is. And that is meant to do that. It'll drive you mad, by the way, the noise everywhere down the street. But but never mind, it's going to cost an awful lot of money. Uh, 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 and um, so let's say an average price there, 12, I think it's more like 10 to 20,000. But let's take his figure and say an average price of around 12,000 pounds per house. Yeah. And that's got to be in by you, basically that you're going to have to build houses with this. Yes. And you're going to have to replace this. So homes get ready because they're going to do away with your gas. They're going to do away with other things and they're going to make you use heat pumps, which won't work. Right. I don't know how you're going to survive in a row of Victorian houses or, 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 or I don't know how you're going to survive in old houses in here. But it's much worse than that. It's much worse than bills like this coming in, because not only have you got now increasing electricity costs and they're going to increase every year. All right. And the green subsidy is just part of the cost. When you see the green subsidy part, it's a tiny part of the cost. So you've got this heat pump cost on top, which won't work anyway, right? There is a considerable quantity of pre-1950s housing stock in the UK, which in the main lack thermal efficiency, said James, a chartered surveyor. And it's true. Paris warns that many homeworkers will need to switch to electric or hydrogen heating systems, install double glazing and loft insulation, and use solar panels, and if possible, operate heat management systems to get the C rating. So what is this C rating? Well, here's the big news for you. You might be buying or living in a house today. You won't be able to sell very soon because past 2028, unless you've got a C-rated house, according to these proposals, unless you've got it, you can't sell it. Not only that, you can't get a mortgage for it. Right. So imagine now you're buying a house and you know that in eight years time, you couldn't sell it because the buyer couldn't get a mortgage. Or in eight years time, you couldn't sell it because you've got to spend 30 or 40,000 or 50,000 on it. Right. This is pretty devastating news to you homeowners out there. And you know how many homes are affected by this directly below C? Nine million. That's about 35, 34 million people. That's about half the population. So about half the population of Britain is going to be placed into a situation. I'm warning you now if you're buying a home. I happened, I'm lucky I bought a home last week. And, and my home is only, I think, G-rated. It's well below because it's an old home that's been modernized, if you like. And, and so... I wouldn't be able to sell it. Currently, I can't rent that house out because you cannot rent a house out below a certain heat insulation level. So the landlords are going to be asked to upgrade all. They've already moaned about this because the cost of the landlords doing it, you tend to have old houses, by the way, to rent. The cost is so enormous. It's easier. Well, it's easier to try and get rid of them at a discount. Yes, but it's going to disrupt the housing market on a massive scale. And it's going to do it now. You don't wait till 2028 because if you know you're buying something in 2024 that in four years has got a problem, that affects today's value enormously. Mm -hmm. And a bit like the cladding situation that happened, which was due to the regulation incompetence. Yes, total incompetence. A bit like that. People get trapped. Well, instead of just those poor unfortunate people being trapped, you're now going to have nine million homes trapped. Yes. It's quite incredible. Right. Uh, 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 and so um, and then it says, although the committee does not specifically estimate the cost for the UK's housing stock, achieving an EPC rating of C, it's estimated the order of 304 billion. That's not a true figure. It's way past that. It's way past that. That's just their individual estimate. So let's now go to the next slide. Right. Okay. And basically, Ray, right, here we are. And the key is this, the, the proposal uh, from the committee, and that's what basically the government is swallowing all the time, uh, you've got to have it by 2028, and 29.1% of own owners uh, require rating, um, so widespread change will be required. The last gas boiler should be sold in 2033. So you're now in an industry of making gas boilers, and you know you can't sell them after 2033. That is a meaningless figure again, because 
why would you buy a gas boiler knowing you won't be able to properly get the parts and, loan and so on? So it really it starts to apply much earlier. Yeah, much earlier. Right. And then, that's where we're going to double the CO2 because we're burning the gas distantly instead of thing. But they're going to replace that with wind power. But don't worry, because when the wind doesn't blow, you'll have no, no energy at all. Right. Heated by electric powered heat pumps during one. Uh, and so from the ground, the CCC estimate 415,000 installations per year by 2025. So in the next four years, we've got to put in about 18, <laughs> about 1,800,000 heat pumps at these enormous costs in the next four years, Anne. Right? And, 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 and we're going to have 5.5 million in by 2030. And by the way, they don't work properly. Just let me say this, right? The report states 700,000 lofts will need to be insulated per year in the next four years. And how many are we doing at the moment? We're doing 27,000. So we've got to go from 27 to 700,000 a year, right? Okay. And, and, and loft insulation on a scale you haven't seen before as well, I would add, right? And then you've got to do wall insulation. If you've got solid walls, you've got to do all sorts of things, yeah? And all that. The committee wants 200,000 cavity wall insulations by 2025, and only 41,000 cavity walls currently. So that's going up from 41 um, to 200. Yeah. It also recommends solid wall insulation measures to increase the quarter of a million to increase to a quarter of a million a year by 2025. So 250,000 a year. And how many are we doing now? We're doing 11,000 a year. Right. This all comes at a considerable cost to a homeowner. Well, that's an understatement of all time, actually. And by the way, don't say subsidies will cure it, because if you want a subsidy of 50,000 quid to do a job, yes, that money you're paying. The government's got no money out. The government only takes it from the public. Yes? Yes. So, so subsidies aren't an answer to any of this. So, are we being asked to pay for this ourselves? Yes. The insulation and the... Oh, yes, yes. Now, some people will give you a, a warm home grant, like in, in Wales, but they're tiny. They're tiny. The government can't afford to do it. We're talking here of trillions. The yeah. total combined thing is trillions. And it's more than the whole COVID thing. We're talking about a, co a COVID thing almost every year. We're talking about continuing. Uh, uh, we haven't got the money, Anne. It doesn't exist anywhere. Right. But I'll be coming to that in a minute because the government have given an answer to this. I'll show you the government answer to the costing for all this, because it would be reasonable, wouldn't it, Anne, if you were sensible. When you adopted a policy like this committee that has said they haven't costed it, yeah. when you adopted a policy that you look at the cost of adopting that policy. What do you think? Reason? You would think. You would hope. We'll come to that in a minute, Anne. We'll come to that in a minute. Oh, okay. Right. So, um, right. And then, of course, I call it no play, no mortgage, the next one. Because the government, the committee, to make matters worse, the committee proposes that all homes with mortgages must achieve the C by 2033, which could mean added financial strain for all owner occupiers attempting to pay their monthly mortgage payments. So you won't be allowed a mortgage. Uh, and even if you've got a mortgage, you've got to upgrade to keep the mortgage by 2033, according to this proposal. So it's no pay, no, 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 no. no subscribe to this no mortgage no subscribe to this no sell your house and so on right and so um next the next one and then uh, if you combine them all together i'm just this combines them all together this particular slide and this is the table this is a table now of, of all the new building regs and so on and 2025 by 2028 by by 2033 and by 2030 etc all the commitments that the um, uh, targets are, right? Uh, uh, right, all homes which have a mortgage, I'll give you the 2033, have to have IPC rating C by 2033, uh, and um, will have to have practicable lofts and cavities and insulated uh, alongside other low uh, measures without, without um, it goes on. It isn't just lofted, it's everything, and you've got to have it, right? And you've got to pay for it. OK, uh, no dwellings can be sold after 2028 unless they meet the minimum uh, of which is rated C. And so there's a table. People can freeze the frame and go through go through that table on this video. And this is what you're being asked to support. And, and this is what look at. 
I'm so frustrated by this. I can't believe it. Oh. I, I mean, it's like it's like talking to children. Yeah. I mean, this is what sensible people apparently in a committee are advising the government, and the government are adopting these. Have adopted some already, and they're, they are continually adopting them. This is what is all being led into for what to reduce CO2 that doesn't need to be reduced, which are huge benefits by increasing it. Yeah. And so on. So that's how bad that is. And that's the eye popping part of this. And I don't think people understood that. So let's go on now to um, this. Right. Now, the Information Commissioner has ordered the Treasury to release an email containing its official estimate of the cost of decarbonizing the economy. The government, now you, I said before, you'd think they'd have costed this. They haven't. And the Information Commissioner is asking them to do it, and they won't release it because they haven't done it. They haven't looked at the cost now. So I'm, genuine, I'm genuinely stunned. <laughs> speechless. <laughs> right. <laughs> Literally speechless. And I'm 70, I keep saying this, but I'm 76, and it gets me riled. It gets me so riled. I've had a life of debunking people. In fact, my whole career was about it. And, you know, but I've debunked, I won't go into it, but I've debunked lots of things. I've been in government bodies and debunked things. And I've never had to debunk on this scale because this is going to hit you. This is going to hit you, the consumer. This is going to hit you in your pocket big time. And you know what you're going to get for it? You're going to get blackouts. That's what you're going to get for it. You're going to get a very, very unreliable power supply and more. You're going to get huge environmental damage, huge environmental damage, right? So they haven't costed it, Anne, and you can freeze the frame, and there's the information on that, right? Now, um, this is just one day's news that I get. This is from the GWPF, people who look at it. And just in, this came today. I'm going to give you the headlines here. The Antarctic sea ice, these are official studies. The Antarctic sea ice is growing, but we don't know why. The Antarctic sea ice is growing, according to scientific reports now, right? Mm -hmm. And they don't know why, because you see, in their world, it should be decreasing. Yeah. So when it's growing, they don't look for a reason. They say, oh, I don't know. Right. It could be they're wrong, of course, but no, that doesn't occur to them. Yeah. The next one, fewer clouds contribute to more sea ice in the Antarctic, Chinese scientists discover. Where is Wally's news? Never mind that one. New Cold War threatens to sink international climate efforts. German Climate Foundation branded a Russian puppet over Nord Stream 2 gas pipeline. This is to do with taking the gas through a pipeline from Russia. That is. Nuclear winter for Britain as power plants close. That is so true. That's the Sunday Times on the 31st of January, right? And what it's saying is you can't get, you're going to be in blackouts, right? <laughs> because when you need the energy is when you won't have it, right? It's as simple as that. We're going to be for blackout. In fact, the power generation systems covered up very near crises recently. How can you have already with what we've got now in wind, reducing to one point, what is just over one percent of our energy coming from wind in a cold spell? And we've had as much as we'll see in a minute anyway. And then um, the one next era, two thirds of UK homes will be unsellable by 2028 unless they insulate. It isn't just insulate, of course, right? But 2028, your home becomes unsellable. You should be taking that into account now when you buy a home, right? I just want a home with a low rating, and I will improve it for my own reasons, but I might not get to grade C because it might not be possible, actually. I, I might not get to grade C. You know why I'm not worried about it? Because I'm going to die with this home. I'm not going to sell it, you know, so that's it. So um, that's it. Next one, and finally, the impossible net zero fantasy. Um, well, that's a, a German magazine by the looks of it. And uh, where well, we finish off, NASA Antarctic Sea Ice growing, but we don't know why. Story. So these are just some of the news stories I get daily, you know, and the public don't really know about. Yeah? Yeah. Now, there we are. Now, this is a cartoon. This is the Green Extinction Event. Right? Mm -hmm. It's I labeled it a poster, the poster cartoon about wind power. And it's pretty accurate that um, it's about how wind power kills the bats, kills the sea. I mean, we're now going to decimate all our seabirds around our coast. We're going to increase offshore wind power, right? Enormously, four times. And that's already been announced, right? The costs are nowhere near true, by the way, that have been announced. We're going to do this. 
We're going to cut off all those fishing grounds. We're going to spend, we're going to increase CO2 enormously in constructing them, by the way, right? And and that is going to be decimation to, to a lot of our natural environment. And they don't care. And by the way, the people do benefit from this. The people who benefit are the rich. The people who benefit are the people who do the guaranteed business deals where you're guaranteed an income from the government for putting up a wind fan. Right? They, they, they do it. They guaranteed it. The, land, the rich landowners in the past, because now you can't do much more of that because there's too much objection. So we're putting it out to sea so the poor seabirds and other birds and, and everything else can be decimated, including insects. And although we can't see the insects, in Germany, what, 35,000 tons a year, uh, which is now having an effect on their insect population. So that, that's what you're getting out of it. I could go on for hours, Anne, about that. And um, by the way, um, this report here, uh, Britain has gone, uh, in 2018, we went for nine days without any wind power at all. So we're going to increase this four times. We're going to do away with all the standard power stations, and And there we have nine days, not just a few hours, but we have to buy it at ten times, as we did from France recently. On that occasion, we had nine days without any wind power being produced. So what's the answer, Anne? Uh, uh, someone tell me, because I'm going mad here. Someone tell me where I'm wrong. Please, in the comments below, tell me where I am wrong, because I need to be told for my own sanity almost. I mean, it's so simple. I am not being clever here. I'm just telling you common sense, right? Uh, that's all. And, and, and there are answers to all this, but they're not what the government is doing. And, and I, I just can't believe we're doing it. it it's beyond belief. So um, now... I, um, I'm going to ask you what those answers are for, but I just want to... There's a lot of information in, in everything that you've just said. Now, what I want to do is, and I've been taking some notes, yeah. to sort of trans... to it's extrapolate from all of that something that I can tell the voter, the voting public. Now, if you, please correct me if I'm wrong. So what we've got is out of a bill of £1,135, £90 of it is green and social taxes. No, that was in 2017. It's risen to £315. So this, this is used to transfer us from the system we have now to a system of green farms and solar and all the rest of it which doesn't work and we've had nine days without wind power so when the wind power when wind doesn't give us power we are importing it yes at a much greater cost 10 times Up right to 10 times. recently it was a record at 10 times so this will as we increase the level of wind farms this will only increase the related problems so we'll have less power yeah exponentially increased not linear i'll explain what i mean by that yeah if, please. if you quadruple you don't just quadruple the problem. You yeah. may increase the problem 20-fold or 50-fold because, because basically you've got no, the proportion of wind to, to a stable power, the proportion of wind to stable power, as that changes, wind goes like that. There isn't anything there to take its place because they're struggling now like this, yes? But as you do away with this, which is the standard power, as you do away with that, there's nothing. So it actually would be 20, 30 times worse. And we're not talking hundreds of years from now we're talking in the next few years I mean, obviously if, if we keep up if we have to if we can't produce our own power we have to buy it in yes costs are going to go up mm -hmm. and up and mm -hmm. up and the consumer is going to take those costs mm -hmm. industry as you pointed out early on if the price of energy goes up which it will then that means that industry obviously it will go up for industry as well that will mean fewer jobs correct and costs passed on to the consumer in other areas. So it would be cost and we more. become uncompetitive internationally. Right. So in other words, our taxes will go up. The mm -hmm. cost of our products we buy will go up. Mm -hmm. And the energy we produce ourselves will go down. Yes. And also, if you look at actually another example of this, when Trump came in, he pulled out the Paris Climate Agreement because he realised how silly that was. And it wasn't yeah. achieving anything. But he, he, he enabled fracking big time. The United States became independent of, of, on power. On energy yeah. in, in, almost immediately right in, in a year or two that's almost immediate became independent jobs thrived the economy thrived because energy is the source of it and uh, politically politically it be they became less dependent totally independent of the middle east that enabled trump 
to do incredible things in the Middle East with deals that no one's ever done for making peace, by the way, right? There are sort of follow-ons to all this. And another 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 podcast where we're doing another broadcast, we may go into the climate, how climate change affects the politics of the world, because it does tremendously, right? So in actual fact, what Biden's just done in banning fracking again is, is make the you're now going to make the states more dependent on the Middle East, giving them more leverage, right, and so on. I, I, it doesn't make any sense at all. And 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 are we should be, as I've said right in our first one, we should be encouraging fracking, which hasn't got the implications of the of the nutters. I'm sorry, I'll call them that because you know if anyone can come to me with evidence saying how fracking damages people, I'd I'd love to hear it. You know, but I'm a rational person, uh, and I, I I will not. I cannot accept, we're not a party that wants to put forward alarmist theories or use scares stories to, scare stories to uh, control people in any way. We want to expose the truth and tell them the truth. And by all means, there must be millions of experts out there on climate change who could come now and devastate me in the comments. And I will answer any comment, by the way. And I often do on these. Yes, I, 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 don't, I try not to miss any. And um, so please tell me I'm wrong. Please tell me what I've just shown you is not true. Please tell me we're not going to blight the housing market. Please tell me that the government policy is not going to cause mega problems for your house. People have struggled to get a house land. A lot of people get married and they struggle to get the first house, especially in a country where we've allowed the population to rapidly grow. Where naturally in the 80s, we were forecasting a decline in population because the birth rate was naturally about 1.8, 1.9. I'm forecasting that. That would have lowered the price of houses over time. Instead of which, we increase the population enormously and, and, and then we have a housing shortage. That's a one on one makes two sorts of situation. So we, we don't apply logic to, to these things. And what this party is about, that you lead, I hope, is applying logic. Absolutely. Uh, by all, tell me. So, you know, just tell me I'm wrong. Tell me where. Uh, tell me what I've said so far is wrong, uh, or tell me anything. I will debate with anyone. I would love. I would love. I'll. I'll show his picture again. Alex Sharma, who's going to be p puffing his chest out, chairing this conference in Glasgow. Um, uh, him. I'd love to have a, com a conversation with him because I don't think he knows the first thing about it. I don't think Boris does. I think Boris is a clown who's just following the mood. And he thinks the mood is green, so let's follow it. A bit like um, going with the Huskies when they were trying to change the image of the Conservative Party. Yeah, with someone I remember recently as a, a as a um, boss of the country, we'll call him. And, um, you know, the one who didn't like Brexit, I think his name was. Yeah. So um, I'm being cynical. But um, so don't be fooled, public. Your, your Climate alarmism is being used to control you. And it's being used to take freedom away, by the way, from you. They're interfering with how you heat your home. They're interfering with the house price. They're interfering with your life in every aspect. And there's a lot more to come. There's a lot more to come. And we will end up, I think, I think the genius in all this for me is all well, because that's where we are. You're being asked to believe what you can't see. And by the way, it's pretty cold at the moment, you know, and so on. Now, I'm not going to take any year or any five years or any 10 years as an example, the five-year trend of cooling is just a five-year trend, no more. To get a climate thing, you'd need 30 years. Well, we actually have had nearly 20 years, so that's not bad. Uh, but the last five years were nice and easy because I took their figures to show you. But which newspaper is telling you, or which party is telling you, A, the climate's cooling over the last five years? B, every single climate change conference to date, every one has achieved nothing. Nothing. By the way, CO2 is now accelerating at the highest rate it has, you know, since since it started to come up in the Industrial Revolution and so on. Oh, how many tell you that the extra record, the record harvest all around the world in Africa and everywhere? How many tell you, oh, by the way, um, the snowfall in the Northern Hemisphere has been increasing ever since 1945? You know, it's a big, I can show you the graph of it, you know, graphs to show you all of that. In fact, I'll show a graph, I'll put a graph on now showing you the increase in, in snowfall. And after that, I'll show you the decrease in, 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 in uh, these are my figures, by the way, the, the, the decrease in um, hurricanes, landfall in hurricanes. So here are those graphs now. Who's telling you this? And, and these are official graphs and things. They're just hidden amongst a, they hide them in the, in the numerous alarmists and things, and they don't like telling you the truth. 
why is it that when I go on radio and just mention and just query some one thing about alarmism, I'm told I'm disgusting for doing that. I'm not allowed to do it again. Why is it that, that you can't, we can't have a rational discussion with the alarmists? I've gone on to, I've gone on to alarmist sites, you know, qualified PhDs and so on, and I start to discuss, and as soon as I get into the data, they shut me off. Why is that? Because science is about challenging. Without that, you haven't got science. And today, we haven't got science in so many areas. Science has been completely corrupted by politics, and it's not science anymore. And, um, and so that, that's what matters. And above all for me, personally, it's a personal thing, to watch my grandchildren being brainwashed is absolutely terrible, absolutely terrible. And, um, you know, uh, they come to me and say, when, when I did my first climate video for you, Anne, uh, they watched it and came to me and said, but granddad, this is not what we're being taught at school. You know, I said, fine, look. You know, let me let me teach you at school. Let me show you. But at school, if I'd have gone to the school, which I was stopped, I actually was stopped because my grandkids said to the they were inviting me, and then one of my grandkids said, "Oh, you made a Tommy Robinson with you." Well, that was the end of that one. <laughs> so uh, all I'd have taught was not to believe me, but to um, the process of what science is, and, and that's what I wanted to teach. I wanted to teach them how to think rather than what to think, and. Um, and, and that's the main message. So that's where we are. Anne. Any more questions? <laughs> um, I do want to clarify just just one yeah. more thing on it. We are now expected. Homeowners are now expected to, at our own expense, insulate our houses. At our own expense. Mm -hmm. If we don't, we can't sell them. And we're talking about the next few years as well. Yes, you are, because by two thousand and twenty-eight. Um, if it's not C or above on the rating, you can't sell your house. So uh, it, isn't just, it isn't just insulation, Anne. It's the whole thing. For, to get the C, it's where you get the heat source. It's the whole thing. It isn't just insulation directly, okay? It's the whole thing, right? Unless you are C or above, you will not, under the government proposals at the moment, um, you will not be able to sell your house. So you should be going to your MP saying, stop this, right? You're not being able to sell your house at all it's banned by it's illegal to sell your house the buyer won't be allowed to buy it illegal to sell your house how about that i mean how you're absolutely right you've you've framed this perfectly at the very beginning this is all about control just look at the control the state has over us now they're telling us what to do with our homes they're destroying uh industry industry destroying the economy overtaxing us uh imposing non systems on us that don't work um and now telling us we can't sell our homes well normally if you saw a home that was a bit derelict and you get it cheap and yeah. um, young couples say well i can buy that it's going to be 20 to 30 percent off we can afford that but it's going to take us a few years we're going to have to live on on wooden boxes and things camp on wooden boxes or cobble boxes until we get it right but we're willing to work at that yeah. You can't do that because unless it's rated, you, you can't buy it. <laughs> so think about all the implications. This it, it goes much wider than I've explained it, actually. It's much worse than I've explained it. But just think about that. And then think about the only party, the only party that's telling you this and explaining it and laying it out. And you can freeze frames of those, of those things I've shown you. And you can freeze frame of that table with all the different steps on up to 2030. And, and but the steps in 2025, you know, you, you, you they can't sell a house, a new house, without a gas with a gas boiler in, and you've got to have a heat pump to replace it. Yeah, and those heat pumps are not cheap, and that's at your own expense. <laughs> not cheap is the exaggeration of all time. And and by the way, we haven't got the capacity to put those heat pumps in, we'd have to import on a massive scale millions, five and a half million heat pumps. So <laughs> And by the way, the production of those heat pumps, if there's a climate emergency, is very CO2, very CO2 giving off, as it were. So you've created enormous problems. You know, there'll be lots of holes in Britain. I mean, if you're worried about fracking, try having a hole right behind your house. Going to heat down. <laughs> yeah. Right? So. And to top it all off, we've, we're facing ecological crises, real ones. Oh, real ones, yeah. I, I, I mean, real ones. I, I mean, the cost, the cost of 
Oh, I, 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 I've shown on a previous um, video, I've shown you this huge things, holes that a wind farm has to be based in. Yeah. And, and they're now trying to, trying to do floating wind farms and things. But at sea, they've got to excavate on a massive scale and put these things in. And these things are enormous. They're bigger than St. Paul's Cathedral. And, and, and they're enormous. And now all these things are turning and chopping and so on. And, and anything that gets near them gets sucked in. And, and, and they're turning at up to 200 miles an hour. But 150 miles an hour, the tip is typical. And they're far too fast for anything to get away from. And they look slow, I know. But if you actually look at the end of one blade, you know, they're very, very fast. And, and, and they cause, uh, they cause, if you like, uh, uh, an air vacuum. They cause a differential in air pressure, which is how, of course, they suck out the energy. And so that, they suck in things. And, and on the last podcast we did, I had a shot of a bird being killed by a wind farm, which someone lucky was there when it happened, you know, on the land that was. So but on top of that, you, 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 you've you got all that drilling to do or, or, or all the manufacturing to do, um, and it's for nothing. You don't achieve anything. You do not claim change the climate, even the milli, 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 minimum amount because we're only one percent it's a whole country to begin with right? Uh, right and by the way we need more co2 not less everything about it is wrong and it's the biggest fraud there's ever been and i've now as you know i hate conspiracy theories i still hate them but you're only left with you're either a stupid idiot or you can, or, or you've got a conspiracy and i go on the side of stupid idiots at the moment so I think Boris, well, I know he is, is a stupid idiot. And, um, you know, when he was coming in, I sort of supported that thrust um, out of Boris and so on. I thought he might be refreshing. But when he announced his climate change policies, that was just the beginning, I knew I was just in despair. And, I, mean, um, I completely, you know, he's, he's worse, far, far weaker. Yeah. Far, far weaker, I think, than anyone expected. Uh, well, we were warned that he had no conviction. He was just um, what's best for him. We were born that way. And I think that was right now. And I, I ignored it a bit. And I thought it can't be that bad. And it is. It, 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 he's just following what he appears. You see, it's the medal on the chest he wants for this. Green energy is going to be the revolution. And it's going to create jobs. He doesn't even understand base economics. As I've said before, a statue of Boris in every bloody town uh, would create jobs. You could create every village and every town, create tens of thousands of jobs. <laughs> but it doesn't do anything any good for anyone. And the only thing that economically matters is creating jobs, making things or services people want. That's what an economy is. It is not. And that's what Russia does, as mentioned before. They failed as a system, the Soviet Union, because they manufactured according to what they wanted to make, not according to what was wanted. And the quality and distribution was terrible. So you ended up with shoes and no socks. You know, it's that sort of economy. And that's what we're going back to. And how can they dare control how we sell our houses, what we do with our houses, etc.? It's all being controlled, and it's being controlled on a big lie. And that lie is dead simple. It's on a CO2. But now they're going to drop CO2, and they're going to go straight to capitalism, because this is all about ending capitalism, right? And that's what it's about. And by the way, the alternative, I've made a video of Cuba, and we, we visited a house in Cuba, where eight people slept in the same bed, which was on a mud floor, on just a mattress, by the way, on a mud floor. They invited us for dinner, but frankly, we declined after seeing the kitchen. But um, we helped them out a bit, you know. But um, I always remember that. Uh, to me, what they had to suffer everywhere we met, everywhere. Uh, $26 income per month, that's US dollars per month, um, for anyone, doctor, surgeon, taxi driver, they got more because they got tips, you know. That's the economy. Nothing to do. But they had the big one to blame, didn't they? The fact they could trade with the whole world except America. They blamed yeah. America. But the whole world was able to trade with them. Canada did a lot. Canada built a motorway. We're heading along the motorway, you know, and without any signs or anything, the motorway just stopped. The time actually stopped right under mud and everything um, because that's how far the money went, you know. Oh, I didn't laugh, but it is actually funny. <laughs> <laughs> no, I know. But, but, but this is what you're going to end, end, end up with. And you've got a conservative government meant to be right wing, meant to be right wing, who are not. I, 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 I mean, they are going down. They're, they're, they're taking the country upstream without a paddle. They really are. An actual fact that upstream without a paddle on a sinking boat. It couldn't be worse. Oh, 
Paul, any final thoughts on this? I know it's driving you absolutely mad. Any final thoughts before we wrap up? Yeah, I'm willing to publicly debate anyone, any expert, anywhere. They may, they may know more about me, about the climate and the modelling, anything. And I've done some climate modelling, by the way. But I'm willing to discuss this with anyone, anywhere, at any time. You know, we can agree on, I, I will not back away. People back away from doing that. I am not backing away. I'm honest. And if I'm wrong, I will tell you all publicly I'm wrong. And that's it. Yeah. Um, but um, that's that's all I can say. And my job today was just to highlight. I wish I could go into more detail because there's a lot more detail all the time. But to highlight to you, the public, to you, the public, what we're heading for with your homes and, and with the costs. You're going to be facing a thousand pound a year extra on your power bill. And for that, you're going to get blackouts and everything I'm telling you. And you're going to be into a terrible situation with your homes. And I, I, I think that's going to be really highlighted. Uh, and that is control. For what? For nothing. <laughs> Paul, thank you. I, 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 I'm genuinely, you said I'd be shocked I am. Um, <laughs> it's one of those scenarios, isn't it, that you're sh absolutely shocked, but not even, but not remotely surprised at the same time. Correct, yeah. I know. Uh, well, I'm not, because I'm not surprised. I agree. I'm good. I, I, I've, I've become a cynical old man. I'm a cynical old man. I'm rapidly becoming a cynical old woman as well. <laughs> Hold on, I'm old, you're not. <laughs> well, thank you so much for taking the time to do all this. And, and I mean, your, your work on this is absolutely incredible. And, and genuinely, genuinely thank you for everything you do. Um, we'll have we'll we'll talk again soon about that world government. Uh, I'd like to I'd like to take that up with you because actually that's what's behind a lot of our and everything the climate yeah. change movement. In fact, they've said it. I've got quotes. I've got quotes I can publish saying that we're going to use climate change as a lever to bring in communist world. I'm not kidding you. Yeah, and I've got some surprising quotes from like that from the UN. Right, they they actually have been some of them have admitted it. And climate change is the lever, and that's it. And that's why now, because the CO2 isn't working, frankly. I mean, we've had, as you know, we've had climate, we've had global warming, then we've had climate change, and then, oh, we've had global cooling, of course. Global cooling, global warming, climate change, we're trying to keep up with them all. And then we've had, um, after climate change, we've had uh, climate alarmism, uh, uh, extreme weather alarmism. And I believe the next phase is going to be straightforward capitalism we've got to end it because it's not good for the environment yeah i mean you can already you can already see it coming you can oh, see, it yeah. Yeah. see it happening yeah incredible paul thank you very much no, thank, thank you thank you. Much for on. thank you very much for everything you do um well i mean how do i how do i end on this we are governed folks we are governed by a mixture of the unbearably corrupt who are in this for themselves and will push any policy irrespective of how damaging it may be if it puts a few quid in their own pocket alongside utter idiocy people who do not have the intelligence now i'm talking about our members of parliament i'm talking about uh, elected officials all over this country do not have the intelligence to understand or research or study fundamentally important concepts that are behind policies that they are pushing. They don't have the intelligence to understand the truth and the reality behind what they are pushing. So corrupt idiocy and sheer, sheer treachery. We're being sold out. We're being sold a lie, as Paul said repeatedly, and he's entirely right. It's one of many lies we're being sold. But this is a lie. The whole thing is based on a lie. And we are going to pay for it. We're going to pay for it. Our society is going to pay for it in terms of extra cost to industry, which will be passed on to us. But you're going to pay for it in your bills as well when you can ill afford them. Because remember, <laughs> there's an economic catastrophe and an employment catastrophe around the corner. And you will have so much, the state will have so much control over your life that they will tell you when you can or cannot sell your home. 
This is where we are heading. Which, in fact, this is where we are. This is where we are. And we are governed by people on both sides of the House of Commons who are fully and completely signed up to this. Now, if you want to stop this, if you want to grab back some truth, some facts, some sanity, there is only one way of doing it. Because do not hope that those sitting in the House of Commons are going to change. They're not. They are what I've just described. They're either corrupt or, frankly, stupid. But either way, they are, we are, they're leading us off a cliff. And they're not going to change. They wouldn't be these people if they were capable of changing into other people. So you have to change them. The only chance you have of stopping this and bringing this country back to some sort of sanity to get your freedom back is to replace those sitting on the benches in the House of Commons. That's it. That is it. Now, we still do have our democracy. Don't give up on it. It's still there. If we go out and vote differently, we will remove them and replace them with new people who will stop this madness. That's the only way of doing it. It's not going to be easy. It's not going to happen overnight. But we can and will restore sanity if we replace those who are sitting on the benches in not just the House of Commons, primarily the House of Commons, but in local governments all over this country, because they are all singing from the same hymn tune, our hymn sheet, and they are all they are all fully signed up. Local government as well as national government, all fully signed up and all either entirely corrupt in it for themselves or frankly, again, too stupid and unintelligent to understand what's really going on. Is that who you want governing you? It's not who I want governing. My job, our job as a party, my job is to lead it. Everyone else's job is to get out there and make it happen, to offer the British, the great British public, someone else, offer them sanity on their ballot paper. That's our only chance. So let us as a party go out and offer sanity to the great British public. That's what, that's our job. That is our job. So let's do it. And let's do it for this country and for your children and grandchildren, because they really need you to do it. Um, thanks again to Paul. Another fantastic, fantastic discussion. I always love um, talking to Paul. And if you want to see more of his outstanding work, and it is outstanding work, go to forbritain.uk slash climate. And he covers various different aspects of this clear, plain English. Um, do check it out. And more importantly, do share it. Tell people what's going on and allow people to understand what we are governed, what and whom we are governed by. They are not acting in our interests. I can promise you that. Thank you for watching. Share this. And as Paul said, he will be uh, reading and responding to comments on this. And if there is anyone out there who can prove him wrong, step up. But I won't hold my breath and I won't hold my breath for this reason, because I don't think you can prove him wrong. So we lay down the gauntlet, um, but I don't think you can. And I think the reason people won't debate Paul is very simple, very clear. Because they can't, because he's right. Thanks very much, everyone, for watching. I shall see you back on my own live stream on Monday. Share this. Share this. Thanks a lot. Take care. Thank you.